Today we're talking about Lisa Montgomery, a death row female inmate executed for the murder of a pregnant woman. Lisa Marie Montgomery was born on February 27, 1968, in Melbourne, Kansas. Because of Montgomery's mother's alcoholism, Lisa was born with irreversible brain damage. She was allegedly essayed and beaten from the age of 11 by her stepfather and his buddies while growing up in a home that was physically and mentally violent. She turned to alcohol as a means of mental escapism. Montgomery's mother learned of the abuse when she was 14 and reacted by threatening her daughter with a revolver. Montgomery attempted to flee by getting married at the age of 18, but both her first marriage and the second one ended in abuse. Prior to having her tubes tied in 1990, Montgomery had four children. Both her first and second husbands testified that she repeatedly claimed to be pregnant after the operation. In 2004, Lisa Montgomery befriended Bobby Joe Stinnett. They bonded over dog shows on a website about rat terriers. At the time, Bobby Jo Stinnett was 23 years old and pregnant and she was excited to learn that Lisa was also expecting a baby. Lisa was in fact not pregnant. Bobby Jo Stinnett, who was born on December 4, 1981, graduated from Graham, Missouri's Nodaway Holt High School in 2000. Stinnett and her husband had a dog breeding operation out of their Skidmore home. While they were exchanging emails about their pregnancies, Montgomery was planning something awful. On December 16, 2004, Montgomery traveled to Stinnett's house saying she was Darlene Fisher and wanted to buy a terrier. Stinnett welcomed her inside the house, but she had no idea what dark thoughts the smiling possible customer actually had. Montgomery strangled Bobby Jo Stinnett, then she cut her unborn child from her womb and fled the scene with the baby. Around an hour later, Stinnett was found by her mother, Becky Harper, lying in a pool of blood. Harper immediately dialed 911 and described the injuries sustained by her daughter as looking like her gut had exploded. Stinnett was declared dead at Maryville St. Francis Hospital after paramedics failed to resuscitate her. Montgomery allegedly called her husband Kevin that day at around 5.15 p.m. to report going into labor and giving birth while shopping in Topeka. On December 17th, the day after, authorities detained Montgomery at her farmstead in Mulvern, Kansas. A witness remembered that Montgomery went out to breakfast the morning before she was arrested with her husband, two teenage kids, and the infant. After following online interactions to Montgomery's IP address, police went to her house originally with the intention of speaking with her as a witness. They located the car that matched the description of the one at the crime site when they got there, and when they went inside, they discovered Montgomery holding the baby and watching TV. After Montgomery's narrative fell apart and she admitted to the crime, she was taken into custody. The kidnapped infant was found and given to the father. The utilization of forensic computer investigations, which followed Montgomery and Stinnett's online correspondence, was credited with the swift recovery and capture. The publication of an Amber Alert to solicit assistance from the public helped the inquiry. Since there was no victim description and the alert had never been utilized in a case involving an unborn child, it was first rejected. The alert was eventually put into effect thanks to Congressman Sam Graves' intervention. The identity of the infant was verified through DNA testing. Montgomery's motivation was thought to have been related to a miscarriage she may have experienced and kept secret from her family at the time of her arrest. After rumors that her ex-husband intended to reveal she had lied about being pregnant in order to win custody of her kids, more questions about her motivations emerged. It was hypothesized that Montgomery needed to have a baby in order to refute the accusation that she had a pattern of lying about being pregnant. A neuropsychologist testified during a hearing before the trial that head traumas Montgomery had suffered in the past may have harmed the area of the brain that regulates aggression. Her defense attorneys, led by Frederick Duchard, claimed she had a mental illness that causes a woman to mistakenly believe she is pregnant and display external indicators of pregnancy during her federal court trial. The Guardian reports that Touchard made an attempt to make this defense only one week before the trial started, after being forced to drop the conflicting claim that Stinnett was killed by Tommy Montgomery, who actually had an alibi. As a result, Montgomery's family refused to work with Duchard and gave the jury information about her past. 
Montgomery suffered pseudociasis in addition to depression, borderline personality disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder, according to expert testimony from Dr. V. S. Ramachandran and M.D. William Logan. Ramachandran testified that Montgomery was unable to control the kind and caliber of her activities and that her delusional state caused her accounts about the crime to shift. The opposing expert witness forensic psychiatrist Park Dietz and federal prosecutor Roseanne Ketchmark disagreed with the diagnosis of pseudociasis. On October 22, 2007, despite the defense's assertion that Montgomery was insane, the jury came to the conclusion that she was guilty. On October 26, the jury made the death penalty recommendation and Montgomery was officially given the death penalty by Judge Gary A. Fenner on April 4, 2008. Good evening, everyone. Montgomery will die for killing a pregnant woman and kidnapping her baby. Well, Jim, it took the jury less than five hours to reach their verdict. Montgomery's eyes were downcast, and she cried quietly as the judge read the decision, death for Lisa Montgomery and a lifetime of pain for her victim's family. We will never stop missing Bobby Jo. She was a sweet and loving wife, daughter, and sister, and would have been a wonderful mother. Becky Harper is the mom of 23-year-old Bobby Jo Stinnett, the grandmother of Victoria Jo. The jury sent a clear message in their verdict form that while they believe Montgomery was physically, mentally, and sexually abused as a child, she is still totally responsible for the crimes she committed. Victoria Jo will turn three on the third anniversary of her mother's murder. Her father and the rest of the family thanked everyone involved that they still have her. Victoria Jo is very beautiful, looks a lot like her mother, um, talking, very intelligently talking. Lisa Montgomery's husband has remained by her side. His face today was that of a devastated man pulled in so many directions for so very long. I'm leaving the courthouse after hearing a jury recommend that his wife die for her crime, Montgomery's eyes were red with emotion and promising to stand by her and their marriage. The prosecutor gave you a circus. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad when you think there's a winner in this. Montgomery describes his wife as not just his wife, but his very good friend. Lisa Montgomery's attorney says she's a sweet individual, and he wishes he could have made that more clear to the jury. The full extent of Montgomery's earlier trauma, independent diagnosis of mental illness, and Duchard's pseudociasis defense were not made public until after her conviction. As a result, detractors, including Guardian journalist David Rose, said that Duchard failed to adequately defend Montgomery in court. In November 2016, Fenner demanded that Duchard undergo cross-examination. Duchard brushed off all criticism and stood by his actions. Montgomery's request for a review was rejected by the U.S. Supreme Court on March 19, 2012. She was detained at the Federal Medical Center, Carswell, in Fort Worth, Texas, where she remained behind bars until she was moved to the location of her execution. Montgomery was assigned the Federal Bureau of Prisons Identification Number 11072-031. She was the sole female federal death row inmate at Federal Medical Center, Carswell, for a long period of time. The baby, Victoria Jo Stinnett, was not regarded a person until she was taken from her mother's womb, according to Montgomery's attorneys, who made this argument during her appeals. Bobby had already passed away, hence the offense was actually death resulting in kidnapping. The courts rejected the argument, stating that the felony murder rule rendered it irrelevant and that Montgomery would still have had to murder Bobby in order to finish the kidnapping. Following her conviction, Montgomery was investigated by experts who came to the conclusion that she had long-standing psychosis, bipolar disorder, and PTSD at the time of her crime. She was allegedly often beaten by her parents and spouses, which caused irreversible brain damage in addition to her frequent disassociation from reality. The United States Constitution's Eighth Amendment prohibits cruel and unusual punishments, including the execution of those who have intellectual disabilities. The death sentence may have been overturned or the matter may have been investigated further if there was extremely compelling and uncontested evidence. At the U.S. Penitentiary in Terre Haute, Indiana, Montgomery was due to be executed by lethal injection on December 8, 2020, but her execution was postponed after her attorneys got sick. Montgomery received a new execution date of January 12, 2021 on December 23, 2020.
U.S. District Court Judge Randolph Moss ruled that the director's order setting a new execution date while the court's stay was in force was not in compliance with law, preventing the execution from being rescheduled before January 1, 2022. A three-judge panel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit overturned Moss's decision on January 1st, thereby restoring her January 12th execution date. In accordance with the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, it may be argued she did not grasp the reasons for her death on that day. Thus, federal judge Patrick Hanlon granted a stay of execution on the basis that her mental capacity must first be assessed. The Supreme Court then overturned the stay with a 6-3 to decision. The immediate execution of the death sentence was ordered. On January 12th, she landed at Terre Haute's execution row. The United States Penitentiary in Terre Haute, Indiana, carried out Montgomery's execution by lethal injection on January 13, 2021. She declined to offer any final words when asked whether she had any. At 1.31 in the morning, she was declared dead. Lisa Montgomery has been executed at the federal prison complex in Terre Haute overnight. She was granted a last-minute stay to evaluate her mental health, but that was overturned. The Associated Press reporting the 52-year-old was pronounced dead at 1.31 a.m. after receiving a lethal injection. Lisa Montgomery's older sister, Diane Mattingly, claimed that she too had experienced SA in the home prior to entering foster care. She advocated strongly for the life of her sister. I went into a place where I was loved and cared for and shown self-worth, Mattingly said. I had a good foundation. Lisa did not, and she broke. She literally broke. Yes, I do believe that she does need to spend the rest of her life in prison. What had happened to Bobby Joe was horrendous. But I am here because I want people to understand the torture that my sister endured her whole life. And that the people that had let her down over and over and over again, from her mother who's supposed to love her and protect her, to a father who was supposed to be there and protect her, and he abandoned her, to the police officer that she told that she was being raped, and he drove her to her house and dropped her off and drove away. Montgomery was the first woman executed in the U.S. since Kelly Gizendaner in 2015, the first person executed in the country in 2021, and the first female federal prisoner in 67 years. Only three other women have been put to death by the American federal government, Mary Surratt in 1865 by hanging, Ethel Rosenberg in 1953 by electric chair, and Bonnie Hedy in 1953 by gas chamber. Victoria Jo Stinnett is now 19 years old. Her father, Zeb Stinnett, as well as the extended family, made sure she was taken care of and raised in a loving environment. While I absolutely feel sorry for little Lisa Montgomery, who suffered horrific abuse from the people that should have protected her, I don't feel the same way about the woman she became. I do believe there was psychological damage, depression, and other mental issues. However, she did know right from wrong. She was a functional adult who had two marriages and kids of her own that she raised and tried at least to give them an education. This tells me she had the capacity of understanding life and society rules in general. She planned to murder Bobby Joe Stinnett, and she made sure she created the right circumstances to accomplish that. This was not a crime executed in a moment of insanity or rage, this was premeditated. Bobby Joe was just 23 years old, and she had a lifetime ahead of her to spend with her husband and daughter. Lisa Montgomery suffered a lot during her lifetime, and she could have chosen to be empathic, loving. She could have decided to be everything her family wasn't. She chose to inflict pain and suffering on others with the same disregard for them that was shown to her. We talked last week about Wanda Jean Allen. She had a low IQ and actual brain injuries that really could have played a part in the way she turned out as a person. That's why I felt like a life sentence would have been enough in her case. For Lisa, however, I feel like the death penalty was fair. Depression or a hard life growing up does not grant a license to murder other people. Let's remember, this was not a crime of passion. In Lisa's mind, this was to reinforce that she was in fact not a liar and to keep her marriage. She was a liar. She was a murderer. The death penalty was not too much for her robbing a mother from her child, a wife from her husband, or a daughter from her parents.
please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.